Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here. This lesson is uh, we're using properties of addition, and in particular, we're using the commutative property and the associative property. And this is uh, lesson 610 in our textbook. Don't forget, all your lessons uh, are found at MrMathBlog.com. Okay, here we go. So um, uh, here's our common core strand, and our question is how how can we use properties to help us add fractions with unlike denominators? So I, I like this lesson. It's one of my favorites here. So here we can use uh, properties of addition to help add fractions with unlike denominators. So we're only adding in this lesson here. So so the commutative property, you know, when I drive to work, I, I commute in my truck to work. And so the commutative property just says uh, one half plus three fifths. We just flip them around. It's equal to three fifths plus one half. And so what I like to say is these guys are commuting around the addition sign. When I drive to work, I commute to work. So this one-half commutes over here, and this three-fifths commutes over here, and it's over the addition sign. So, so one-half plus three-fifths equals three-fifths plus one-half. And the associative property just says we're, we're um, associating, instead of associating these two numbers first, we associate the second two numbers first. So all the, the two-ninths, one-eighth, and three-eighths are still here in the same positions, two-ninths, one-eighth, and three-eighths, except over here, instead of grouping these guys in parentheses, we group these guys in parentheses, and we'd rather do these guys in parentheses because they already have common denominators right here. So we can add 1 8 plus 3 8. That would equal 4 8 right there. And, and remember, you guys, parentheses tells us which operation to do first. So instead of doing these ones first, we would do these ones first because they already have common denominators with the 8 right there. Okay, so we're going to use these properties here. So here's an example. Julie is saving for a new bike. In February, she saves one-third of the total cost. In March, she saves one-third of the total cost again, and then, and then one-sixth more at the end of March. So in March, she saved one-third, and then again one-sixth. So how much of the total cost of the bike did Julie save by the end of March? And so, so what we're going to do is add one-third plus one-third plus one-sixth right here to find the total cost right here. So we're going to, um, so here it is. Uh, this is uh, the February. She, sh she uh, uh, saved one-third in February. And then in March, she saved, uh, it's hard to say, uh, one third and then one six. So so here we're going to um, uh, add these together right here. So we're going to uh, use the associative property, and the associative property just means we're moving the parentheses. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, instead of, we're just going to move the parentheses to right here and right after this one third right here. So it's in the same order. So one third, one third, one six. So one third, one third, one six are going to go inside of here. So now instead of uh, adding these two first we're going to go ahead and add these two first because they have a common denominator. See, they're in the same position. We just move the parentheses to a new uh, uh, pair of numbers here. All right, and then one-third plus one-third is easy mental math. We just add one plus one is two, so two-thirds plus this one-sixth right here. And then we'll get a common denominator, which is uh, since 3 goes into 6, the common denominator is 6. So over here, I've multiplied it by 1. Our 1 is 2 over 2. That way we get 3 times 2 or 6 downstairs. And 2 times 2 is 4 right there. So we're going to replace 2 thirds with 4 over 6. And then 4 over 6 plus 1 over 6. Now we can just add the numerators and we get 5 over 6 right there. Okay. So Julie has saved 5 sixths of the total cost of her new bike by the end of March. Okay. All right, so explain why grouping the fractions differently may make it easier to find the sum. Well, when we regroup the numbers, instead of adding these guys first, which have uncommon denominators, we add these two guys first. So uh, we can uh, group the fractions that already have common denominators, and then we can use our mental math to add those. They're a lot easier. One-third plus one-third gave us this two-thirds right here. Be a little harder to get common denominators here first, and then whatever that is, and get a common denominator with that one too. So you can regroup the numbers. So that's what's the a benefit of the associative property. All right, so here it says use the commutative property and the associative property to add 2 and 5 eighths plus 1 and 2 thirds plus 1 and 1 eighth. Okay, so here's the common denominators. So let's talk us through here first. So what we're going to do first, before we move any parentheses, we're going to swap these two guys. So they're going to commute around that addition sign. 
That way, the, the this 5 eighths right here will be next to this 1 eighth right there, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to move those around. It's called the commutative property of, uh, of addition there. Uh, so we can get um, uh, the eighths next to each, uh, each other right here, okay? So all we did is move these two numbers around the addition sign. So they commuted around the addition sign. All right, now we're going to move the parentheses. So instead of having these two numbers together, we're going to have these two numbers together. And when you move parentheses, that's called the associative property. Okay, so we're just going to, um, everything stays in the same spot as above right there, so we just move the parentheses around right there. Okay, now we can go ahead and add these common denominators. So, so 5 eighths plus 1 eighth is 6 eighths. Okay, and then 2 plus 1 is 3, so this becomes 3 and 6 eighths. So our mental math is going to be 3 and 6 eighths right here, and then this number is just the same right there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get a common denominator between 3 and 8. So, so uh, we're going to write equivalent fractions with like denominators. So I did that over here. So this 2 thirds, we just multiplied it by 1, but our 1 is 8 over 8. That way we get 3 times uh, 8, which is 24. Okay, and this fraction here, the one with the, uh, the 6 eighths, we multiplied this one by 1, but our 1 is 3 over 3. That way we get the same common denominator of 24. Okay, so now this 1 and 2 thirds becomes 1 and 16 over 24. This 3 and 6 eighths becomes 3 and 18 over 24. All right, let's slide that up right there, okay? All right, now we can go ahead and add the fractions and then add the whole number. So 16 plus 18 is, um, I know 15 plus 15 is is 30 so 16 plus 18 is going to get us 34 so so and then add the whole numbers 1 plus 3 is 4 so we get uh, 4 and 34 over 24 all right now we're going to rename that okay so we're going to take that 4 and 34 over 24 and we're going to break it down to um, uh, 4 plus 24 over 24 plus 10 over 24. See here, 24 plus 10 is 34 right there. And this right here equals 1. So this is going to be 4 plus 1 right here, which is going to get us... Um, 5 right there, and so we get 5 and 10 over 24. So that's what uh, renaming does right there, okay? All right, and then uh, now we're going to go ahead and simplify. So uh, these guys can be both be, be divided by 2. So 10 divided by 2 and, and 24 divided by 2 gets us 5 and 12, so it becomes 5 and 5 twelfths right there, okay? All right, let's try this, you guys. Let's use the properties to solve and show each step and name the properties used. So let's do one at a time right here. Okay, so right here, we um, these guys are already next to each other, but we're going to put this one and this one in parentheses. So it's called the associative property when we move the parentheses around. All right, now we can use some mental math and go ahead and, and add. So uh, 1 fourth plus 3 fourths gets us 4 fourths, okay? And then uh, this is just 1 right here, so that's 5 and plus 1 right there, which is going to give us 6, so we'll just simplify. And then now we can just add the whole number, 6 plus 1 gets us 7, 7 and 5 twelfths, okay? We didn't have to do anything with that 5 twelfths because it, it just cleaned up nicely. All right, we had one more of those. Let's do that one here. So here we're going to... Um, uh, get these together. So this 5 and this 5 we want to get together. So let's first move these around the addition sign. So they're going to be commuted around the addition sign right there, okay? And then now we're going to, instead of grouping these two together, we're going to group this one with this one. So we're going to move the parentheses. The numbers stay in the same position, just the parentheses move, associative property. And then we can go ahead and add 1 fifth plus 2 fifths is 3 fifths right there, okay? All right, and then now we can get a common denominator between 3 uh, tenths and 3 fifths. It's going to be uh, 10, so we just multiplied that 3 fifths by 2 over 2. That's just 1. So it doesn't change the value when you multiply it by 1. It's just, I say to my students, it gives it a facelift. It makes it look different, but it's the same person inside. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. So, so this is going to be 6 tenths right here instead of 3 fifths. Now we can go ahead and add. 3 tenths plus 6 tenths, 3 plus 6 is going to get us 9 tenths right there, okay? All right, you guys, I hope that helped. Take care.